Hey guys, Dark Side Minions here again. Just coming at you to do an Amoeba Care and Setup video. Not a lot on YouTube um, about Amoebas, so I thought I would do a video uh, out there for anybody who might have one to help you out and give you a little more information out there than what is out there already. Um, first thing, you're going to want a 40 gallon breeder. That's what I have here. It is 18 inches wide by 36 inches long by 18 inches tall. And a substrate, you're going to want about 3 to 4 inches. You're actually going to want about 4 to 6 inches for an adult, but I just have a juvenile right now. Um, so you're going to want about 3 to 4 inches or so is what I have in there. Uh, for them, they like to dig. They'll spend a lot of time under the substrate, you know, um, burrowing. It's humid under there and warm. So, you know, um, I use cocoa fiber. I also have in there, you can see there's uh, leaf litter and sticks and whatnot. I actually have mealworms inside the substrate, under the substrate, in there living. Um, um, it's basically I'm starting and leaf litter and everything. I'm hoping that I'm basically it's the startings of bio substrate, um, so I don't have to clean it out basically. Uh, and they'll take care of the waste from the amoeba and everything. Plus, hopefully they'll grow and breed in there. And amoebas are very active foragers, so. Um, they're, he's going to be digging around a lot and even more so when he realizes that there's prey items to be had in his enclosure. So it's more active for him. I've heard that biosubstrates make animals, especially te tegus and other members of the Tayed family and also monitors, very happy. So it makes it easy because they usually require a lot of substrate and changing that can be a hassle. So if you use bio, when you bypass that. Um, as you can see in that corner, I've got some sticks and whatnot, just extra stuff. I have right there is a half log hide. He doesn't use it a lot. Um, that's grape wood across it. And then, of course, cork bark across there going on to his um, basking rock which is right here. Spends a lot of time under it. Um, that's kind of his hot spot because it's warm, it's dark, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, water bowl, of course. I've noticed that amoebas don't really care for the water that much, but they do drink it. They just don't like to... He'll jump over his water bowl for the most part. But he does drink it, of course. Um, yeah, uh, basking light, you're going to want a basking spot of about 95 degrees or so. Um, I wouldn't get any hotter than that. Uh, and I wouldn't go anywhere lower than probably 90, 85 maybe. But 90 to 95 is a good uh, temperature. They love they have to have it, they don't just love it, they have to have UVB, that's what that is there. That is a 10.0 UVB uh, long bulb uh, fluorescent fixture. Um, of course, screen lid to prevent them from getting out. You do not want them to get out. When I was doing the first video um, for him that I had to erase or whatever, he was in a box behind me and he ended up getting out and getting into my room and they are very 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 fast and yeah very fast it was very difficult to catch him I, it exhausted me really I was crawling around trying to get him he was getting behind everything um, you're gonna want humidity um, people actually they are tropical and people think you're gonna need a high humidity but I've done research on them and found that they are really found. Of course, you know, Florida has a high humidity, and they've they been introduced to Florida. But in their native re rains, 
regions, um, they're really common in areas where forest has been cleared, where the rainforest has been cleared more so than they are even in the forest. So um, humidity, 60 to 80 percent is plenty. Um, just spray it down a couple times a week, a few times a week, depending on how dry your area is. Make sure there's water in the water bowl, and he'll do. They'll do fine. Um, like I said, in the deeper the substrate, the better, because if he wants more humidity, he can dig under and get to it. So um, they eat uh, all kinds of bugs, and I mean they eat roaches, crickets, uh, mealworms, waxworms, um, superworms, he eats all that. I've also heard that they'll eat fruit. He has not ever eaten it and I've heard that they'll scavenge so you can put things like turkey in there. Again, he I've done it, he didn't touch it. So I don't know if there's any truth to that. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna want to keep an ambient temperature of about oh I'd say on the warm side uh, basking spot 95 warm side temperature 90 85 90 and then down from there all the way to the cool side no lower than 75 during the day cooler at night <clears throat> his lights go off completely no other heating during the um, at night comes out during the day basks he's fine uh, other food that they'll eat, they'll eat night crawlers. He loves night crawlers. I'll dangle them there under his, right by his rock where he can see them. He'll grab them up, eat them. Um, of course, pinky mice. Um, he'll get up to, they'll get up to two feet. Mine's only 14 inches right now, but they'll get up to two feet when they get up to that. You know, hoppers. You don't really want to go anything bigger than a hopper. Um, but yeah, uh, they're a real fun pet to keep. Uh, he's very pretty, you know. Um, uh, he's sleeping right now. It's nighttime, lights are off, so I don't really want to get him out and everything. But uh, other videos, I have other videos on my channel, and you can see them on there. Um, real pretty green color with white stripes down their sides. Great brownish blackish speckling's on their head uh, their tail is this really turquoisey blue color and so and the males underneath their legs their thighs and pelvic area is also really bright turquoise blue color um, he's shy he doesn't come out a lot he comes out about mid-morning um, from about 10 o'clock to uh, well about whenever the sun starts coming through the windows here he comes out and basks and forages around. I hear him um, in the mornings. And about 1 or 2 o'clock, he's done. He's back in his hiding spot, um, just kind of sleeping the day away. Coming out every now and again, you know. I take him out every once in a while to hand tame because uh, uh, when I first got him, he was very shy. And he would hide and uh, wouldn't come out to eat. So we've gotten more used to each other. He comes out a lot more now to forage around and eat. And, but uh, yeah, I think I've answered you know some basic questions. If you have any more questions, just ask, and I'd be happy to answer them. Or if you have any video requests. So until next time, Dark Side Minions signing off.